Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Meredith and I am one of the FOF educators. Um, I'm so excited you are joining me today. It is National Sewing Month. September is National Sewing Month, if you did not know that already. So this month, or for this live, I really wanted to hone in on like embroidery sewing and setting up just back to the basics of embroidery sewing. So I'm really excited you're here with me today. Um, just a shout out to Ryan and Amy in the background. They're helping um, send over questions, answer any questions you have, um, things like that. If you um, if we don't know it, we will figure it out and we will come back and answer it for you. Um, things like that. So just feel free to send those questions in. They'll send them over to me um, and we're going to get going. I'm going to start with um, hooping, just very easy out of the gate hooping. My tips and tricks. I love embroidery. Like that's one of my main focuses with sewing is embroidery. And so um, I love doing t-shirts and things like that also. And so I want to give you some of my tips and tricks for getting things centered, getting the right stabilizer, getting them placed right, getting them stitched out correctly on your machine as well. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's start out with hooping. I'm going to switch over here to this camera here first. Um, okay. So different stabilizers. Stabilizer all depends on what kind of fabric you're working on. So if you have a cotton fabric or um, a, a cotton fabric, basically something that doesn't stretch, you can use a tear away. So the, let me come back over here for a second and I'll talk to y'all. So with cotton fabric, you can have a tear away, you can have a wash away, you can use an iron on or a, um, a cutaway as well, depending on how thin or thick the fabric is. Um, but for the majority of cotton, I use a tear away or a wash away. Um, but for t-shirts and knits, you're going to want a permanent stabilizer, a stabilizer that's going to stay on your garment after you're done embroidering, because that helps keep those stitches when you stretch your shirt to put it on or whatever. Um, it helps to keep those stitches from stretching out. So you can use a cutaway, a no-show mesh, a fusible no-show mesh. There's lots of different options um, out there for different types of stabilizer for um, knit fabrics as well. Just depends on what you're doing. Um, visit your local retailer. They are happy to assist you or feel free to, if you've got a project coming up or something that you had difficulty with in the past, feel free to type it in there and let us know. Um, and we can see if we can get that answered for you so you can be successful the next time around. So let's go back over here to hooping real quick. So we're going to start out with stabilizer and getting it in the hoop um, appropriately. So you have your hoop and there's two pieces to the hoop. You have the inner piece and the outer piece here. This outer piece clips down, screws in and whatnot. So when you put your stabilizer or your fabric in your hoop, you're gonna take out the middle one and there is a right or wrong to them also. So let me see if I can show you. Let me see if I can find it. There are these little arrows right here and you want these arrows to line up. So I've seen where some people will flip their hoop this way and hoop it or they will flip this inner piece this way. That does not work. It does not fit in here the right way. You want to make sure that these little arrows are lined up. If you see on this hoop here, I put my initials for a couple reasons. One, because when I would go to classes or I would um, go to retreat or something, I want to know that this hoop is my hoop. But then also I want to make sure if I see these two initials together, that my hoop is correctly hooped, that it's not this way also. So you could have it, I've seen or people, are, I can't even fit the hoop in this way. It doesn't naturally fit that way. So you just want to make sure that your arrows down here are lined up, or if you put little markings so that you know that they're yours, things like that are my little tips for making sure you get it hooped correctly. So you always want to be on a flat surface as well. You don't want to do this on your lap or something that, that doesn't have complete coverage of your hoop. You're going to take your stabilizer, and I'm using, um, for this one here, I just have tear away. And then we're going to take our inner hoop and I already have this loosened and opened up over here. You want to have this open when you do this and you're going to hoop this and push this down in here just like that and make sure that this is smooth as well. With um, tear away, it's really easy to make sure that it's smooth like that. Then what you're going to do, you're going to push in this lever right here and I'm needing a lot of resistance. So I'm actually going to unscrew, loosen my screw a little bit until I don't. And then once you've clamped it down, you can tighten it back up, just hand tighten it. It doesn't have to be cranked down or anything like that. And then another little trick that I learned, tip trick that I learned from our service department is you should always push that inner hoop down just a little bit. Let me see if I can get that so you can see. 
right here. So if you see, there's a little bit of a ledge, like it's like a 16th of an inch or smaller, just a little bit of a ledge. You do this for a couple reasons. One, it gets your stabilizer taut in your hoop. And then also that gives you a base for your hoop to be moving on your embroidery arm. So it's not moving on this hoop. It's moving on your stabilizer that's smooth and not roughed up. So any questions with that so far? Pretty simple and easy. You want a flat surface, um, making sure that your hoops are going in correctly when you put them back together, things like that. Have the clamp open, tighten it. Don't force it um, because these can break and there are replacements for it. But if you can't manually do it with just a little bit of tension or even just loosely, don't force it. Just loosen your screw and then push it down and then tighten it up. But if you notice when I did that, I didn't pick up my hoop. Um, until it was clamped down completely because if you pick it up it can shift and your stabilizer can shift and then you don't have that taut stabilizer and that's what you really want a good hooping um, to find the center now so if you look on the hoop also it has these notches right here on the left and right and then you also have them got it underneath my little tape here again this is my little way of knowing that I've got my there's a notch there and a notch down here so what we're going to do, I'm going to take, I, I love this ruler. I got this from, it's just a metal ruler. I got it from a craft store, but I like the size of it because when I get my bigger hoops, when I, when you have this hoop, the 240 by 150 or the 360 by 200, it reaches across the entire hoop. So I love, I love that because then I can easily draw my lines. <laughs> Amy, slow down. I'm speedy. I'm sorry, y'all. I am a fast talker and I can tell myself the entire time, talk slow, talk slow. And I will still talk fast. So we're gonna line up our ruler here with our notches at the top and the bottom. And I'm just using a Frixion pen. You can use a regular pen, you can use um, a, a, a marker. Um, when you're using tearaway, let me preface this a little bit. When you're using tearaway, um, you can use a pen because you're gonna pull that out or a marker or whatever. But if you're using a cutaway or a mesh that's a permanent, I would not suggest using a marker or anything like that um, because it can bleed through because it is still going to stay there. So, but I just always use my friction pens. They, they go away with the heat, no problem. And then we're going to draw our line here from left to right. So that's our center right there. Let me see if you can see that. That is our center. But you may notice that it looks like the center is a little bit lower than the actual center of the hoop. And that is correct. So there is a reason for that. And if anybody knows the reason for it, Type it in the chat really quick. I see Amy's got a question, so I'm gonna read that one while y'all, if somebody can tell me why there's more space at the top. So Cindy said, I use a black permanent marker and color in the two, yep. Uh, then it's a reminder makes, yep, that's perfect. I love that idea of just, she said coloring, putting a permanent marker and coloring in the arrows so that you know that those arrows um, should always be touching. That's a great tip, thank you, Cindy. So if, Hopefully y'all have typed in some responses for why there's space back here. But the reason there's space back here is because you have your presser foot. You have your embroidery foot that needs more space back here. So technically this is a 120 by 120 hoop, but you don't have the entire hoop to work within. You have a little bit less so that you've got space for your embroidery foot in the back. So don't be thrown off when your center is not in the center of your hoop. Go off of these guides. As long as you go off these guides and you have your hoop incorrectly, that's the center right there. So just my little tidbit for there. Yay, hopefully people were saying allow room for the presser foot. Yes, perfect, thank you. Okay, any questions on this so far? I'm gonna do another one here in just a minute too. But let's talk about getting things onto your hoop. Sometimes you will have fabric um, if you have fabric that fits within your hoop, feel free to hoop it. Again, same process. You're going to put your fabric over top of your stabilizer and then hoop it down the way I just showed you. But sometimes you may have a project that will not fit into your hoop. So if it's a piece of fabric that, I mean, this one might, this one would not fit in. If your fabric doesn't fit in completely on your hoop, the same way your stabilizer does, don't try and hoop it because it's not going to be taut enough you're gonna have um, give. You notice also, this is something I didn't mention, that my stabilizer comes out on all four sides. You don't want to have a piece of stabilizer that comes out on the sides, but not on the top and bottom, because it's not secure in those areas. You wanna make sure your stabilizer covers your entire hoop. Always have a big enough piece. Don't try and, and skimp when it comes to hooping stabilizer. 
So let's take a piece of um, fabric. Say you wanted to find the center of that. So this is not a square, square piece of fabric, but we're going to make it work for today. I'm going to find my center here. I'm just folding it in half and finger pressing it. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Fold it the other way. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take, I have my little, I don't know if y'all can see, can you see my little lines there for my center? I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to push it through that center, trying to get it so that the light reflects off of it the right way, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do it again. Um, but I'm going to put my pin right there in the center of where I just folded my center of my fabric. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my hoop up and I'm going to put that pin right there in the center of my lines that I made just like that. And I'm going to hold it from underneath, not holding it tight to pull it through or anything. I'm just holding it. And then I'm going to turn my fabric the way that I want it, whatever it is you're doing, um, turn it which way you want it, get it straight, get it all lined up. And then you're going to pin that in place. And all I'm doing is I'm, I'll show you on one of the edges. It'll be easier to see. So this is just to hold it in place because we're obviously going to take this out before we go to embroider, but to pin through, I know, I remember when I was doing classes that people struggled with um, tearing their stabilizer or pushing it through and it not being taught when they use their pins. So you're going to push it through just a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is my right hand, I've got one finger on the pin and my thumb in front of it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my fingers on the back side, find the point of the pin. And I'm going to push inward lightly. And then with my thumb, I'm going to push down so that it comes right through just like that. So I'll show you that one more time. You will get, you will get stuck. I've stuck myself. I can't tell you how many times, but this is the way to secure it without tearing your paper, but then also making sure that your piece of fabric or whatever it is you're embroidering on is smooth. So push it through here first. I'm going to push up a little bit with my finger, pushing the point back up. And then I'm pushing down in front of where my pin's gonna come out with my thumb so that it comes through just like that. And you're gonna wanna pin on all four sides. Once you're done with that, you have the option to do a basting fix stitch. This is just temporary. This is not permanent. This, I would not rely on this. I strongly suggest doing your basting stitch afterwards for a few reasons. It secures it better to the stabilizer and also, if you're doing something on a garment or on something that you've already cut and you want it to, to make sure that it's in the right place, let me switch over here. You're going to want to see that basting stitch. So you can pull your hoop off your arm, hold up your garment, whatever it may be. I, I do this almost every time just because I want to make sure that when it's on a garment that it's straight specifically. I hold it up and I look to make sure that that basting line is where I want it and it's not wonky because if it's wonky, I can easily take that basting stitch out, adjust my fabric, whatever it is I'm embroidering on, re, re, um, do the fixed stitch and check it again. It's easier to take that basting stitch out, make adjustments than it is to start completely over because you didn't have something straight. So just my little tidbit there. So coming back over here. So we have our stabilizer hooped, super easy. And then our, our fabric too. Any questions on this so far? We're doing good. If y'all have questions, just type them in there. Amy, will, Amy or Ryan will get them over to me. Um, so let's see. What did I want to show y'all next? Let's. I'm going to hoop again over here because for t-shirts. T-shirts are the majority of what I do. Um, once somebody finds out that you embroider or you sew, I, I'm sure y'all can agree. How many phone calls do you get? Can you embroider this for me? Can you sew this for me? Can you put a name on this? So. This is, this is what I enjoy doing, so I don't mind. Again, same thing. I've got my flat surface. I've got my stabilizer. This is a no-show mesh here. We have a fusible no-show mesh and a regular. I use the regular most of the time. Um, so we're going to hoop that here. I've got my clamp opened, and I'm loosened here. Everything's flat. This is where you can also make sure that this is not, you know, you don't want it to be like this. This is not, this isn't okay. You want to make sure that you have a smooth, surface. So what I do sometimes is I will put the top end or one of the ends in and I will take my hand and slide it down. And as I do that, it pushes that bottom piece down and then I have a smooth, smooth area there. Then I'm going to push my clamp in and then I'm going to lift it up and tighten this just till it's hand tight. You don't want to crank it down because you will break it. And then what you're going to do, you're going to push that inner hoop in so that you have just a little bit of a ledge right there. See that little bit of a ledge there? 
We're going to do it at the top. Oh, and I pushed it too far. But that helps get it taut as well. That gets a little bit more tight in there. So that's how we're going to do that there. Then I'm going to draw my lines again here, lining up my notches, my ruler with my notches, just like that. And same thing over here. Just like that. Super easy. That's the center of my hoop right there. So if you don't have the option to do precise positioning or the hoop scan or anything, this is what you should rely on. Finding the center of your hoop, and then you will center your design on your machine, and it should line up right there in the middle. Again, do your fixed stitch, make sure you're good to go, and then you're good to go there. So let's start with onesies, because I know I feel like onesies are what the majority of questions I get on things. And I actually already have my, my marks on here, but I'm going to do it anyway. Let me talk about one more thing really quick here. So when I do shirts, another little trick that I have is I will put the design in the software and I will print it out life size 100%. So um, when you go to print, um, you go, I think it's only like the second page, depending on how big your design is. Normally if it's just a monogram or something or a logo, um, I print it out at 100%. And then what I'm gonna do, I've got my full, imagine I've got my full sheet of paper here. I'm gonna cut on the grid closest to my design all the way around. So if you look, I cut close all the way around. You could go one more out if you want, but I wanna see roughly where it's gonna be at on my, on my hoop. But this design is centered in the hoop when I printed it as well. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to line up. If you notice also, the crosshatch lines are a little bit darker than the other lines. So like this line right here, Right here is a little bit darker, and then the one that goes up and down is a little bit darker as well. So I'm going to line up those lines and press in the middle, and then I'm going to just snip it just a little bit. If you look right there, I snipped it just a little bit, and then I'm going to fold it the other way and do the same thing, lining up those dark lines, and then just snip it just a little bit right there as well. So this is my go-to also. This is my fail-safe. Um, this is how I do all of my shirts, monograms, anything like that. I print this out and I actually put it on my shirt to see where I wanted that. So let's go back and I'll show you that. So we have our shirt here and say, I want this design right here in the middle. And my little, just again, my suggestion on onesies, I go about an inch to an inch and a quarter down from the ribbing right here um, on onesies and then you just center it. But then what you're gonna do is you're gonna find where you want it, put it exactly where you want it right there. And then you're gonna take your friction pin and at those middle marks, we are gonna draw little um, lines. And then also in the middle, I'm gonna just draw a little circle right there in the middle. So there I have, you can see that. I have my center line, my center hole, and then I've got my um, top and bottom and my left and right. There's a couple of reasons I do this. One of the main reasons I do this is to find my center also to have where I want it. But then also when I do my fixed stitch, if my fixed stitch lands within these lines, inside of my lines, I know it's where I want it to be. If my fixed stitch lands to the left of one of the lines and I have more space on this side, then that means I'm more to the left or to the right or up or down on my, on my shirt. So again, it's a fail safe when you do that fixed stitch to see if everything's lined up as well. So just another little tidbit. So just like that. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to use this smaller hoop that I have over here already hooped. I would not use tearaway on a t-shirt. Again, answer, feel free to answer in the comments. I'll, I'll, I'll answer it here in a second. But when you're doing knits, what kind of stabilizer should you use? Should you use a cutaway or a tearaway stabilizer? There are different forms of cutaway and tearaway, but for knit, would you use cutaway tearaway? Let me know in the comments and I'll tell you here in just a second. So I have my onesie turned inside out here and you can, if you have a serger and I do this sometimes with smaller onesies, feel free to just take that middle or that side seam out and serge it back up when you're done. I take that side seam out, open it up so much easier to work with, but with some of them, I, I just don't want to waste the time to do that. So with bigger ones, or if it's a smaller design, I just work through the opening of it here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to find that center marking that we had on our design center one where I marked it in the middle and I'm going to take a pin and put it through that hole 
and the same thing on my stabilizer. Put that pin right through the middle mark in there. And lay it out and smooth it all out here. And you can just push it back. In. Oh, I'm going to leave it for today. You don't even have to push that pin back in. We just want to make sure it stays in the center. Then what I'm going to do is I don't want to try and work with all of this at once. I want to work with one um, line at a time. Somebody said cut away or multiple people. Good job. Cut away. Perfect. You want to cut away with knits because you want it to stay in. So I have my little notch here for the bottom of my design. And I'm going to either look up where that little notch is out on my hoop or I'm going to feel. I most of the time feel through my shirt. And there's that notch. I want to line up my line with that notch right there. And then I'm going to take a pin, making sure I'm lined up here, and pin it in place. This is just temporary. Again, we are going to fix this in the long run. So right there. And then I'm not going to go to my left or right. I'm going to go to my top. You want to work um, with top or bottom or left or right first. It doesn't matter which one, but you want to do, if you do left first, then go to right. If you do top, then go to bottom and vice versa. So then we're going to find our top marking. And I, this is where we're going to make sure that this is all smooth here. I'm not going to pull my shirt and pin it because when you un, um, when you finish your design, if you pulled your um, knit shirt, it's going to clamp back in on you. So we're just going to smooth it out and line up that line. And with white onesies or with white shirts or anything, you can see the line that you drew and you can line up that notch or you can, again, feel for the notch on the hoop. And then we're going to take a pin and pin through just like that if you there you go I love that if you wear it don't tear it oh I like that that's a good that's a good little reminder of saying there that's great and then we're going to do the same thing on the sides I'm going to line up my dots with my hoop right there and then pin on this side and I still, once I do this, there is some room for a little bit of, of air for it to move left or right. So once I'm done with this, I will still precise position just the center point whenever I do this, just to make sure it's where I want it on the center of my shirt. Um, so there's my notch there, and I'm smooth all the way across. And there we go, just like that. I'm going to pin. I know y'all can't see. Hold on, my hands put my shirt's in the way. But if we pull this back, now where our design is going to be is smooth and flat, just like that. And that's the space we're going to work within. It's all right there. Don't try and work with, with the rest of this onesie. You just want to work little bits at a time. That's what's going to make it more manageable to work with. So let's do a shirt, too. I want to show you all a shirt because it's a little bit easier. So if you've never done shirts before, I would not suggest starting with a onesie. I would suggest starting with a t-shirt that's a little bit bigger. Um, but I just wanted to share my tips for onesies because I feel like that's a good majority of what of what I see and, and do. So, so there's that. And let's do a t-shirt now. So I have a t-shirt that still has the sticker on it. Whenever I do t-shirts for my own kids, I buy an extra one because there is room for air sometimes. So um, we do that. All right. So I have actually, I'm going to switch. I'm going to do this one because I want to show you this little tool that I have. So this is an adult size shirt here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to line up my little shoulder seams here, smoothing it out. And this is the left chest on this side that you're seeing here. If I can get this way. What are we doing here? There we go that smoothed out. And then I have this lovely little tool that you can get. I've only seen it on Amazon, but I'm sure there are some um, dealers out there that have this tool. It's called the Embroider's Helper. Um, it's not very much, but you can get it off Amazon, Amazon for sure. But what you're going to do is you're going to, it gives you the option for doing a button shirt, but then also just a regular t-shirt. And it tells you to fold it in half. And then we're going to line up this little um, arch right here with where the neck is going to go and based off of the size. So this is a size large shirt. So right here, it says large. We're going to put a little mark right here in this corner, right there. So that is where if you wanted something over your left chest, that's going to be the center. So then what I would do is I would take my little design that I've already cut out at 100% life size, and I'm going to line up the center of it right there. 
making sure that we are straight and then draw my other lines here just like that and then we're going to hoop that and that is where for a large shirt roughly where you would want to put um, a logo at if you had it over the left side of your chest so let me show you again hooping we're going to turn our shirt inside out i'm going to use the smaller hoop again here and we're first going to put a pin in our center um, marking that we had just like that and then the center of our hoop just holding it in place and I actually do this most of the time on my ironing table for one reason because I can push this pin down into my iron my, not my iron my ironing table and it will hold it in place for me so that I can make sure everything's smooth but for today we're going to make this work so I'm going to find I just by habit always find my bottom point first we're going to pin that in place. And then same thing for the top. Find that mark, that notch on the hoop. We're going to smooth out. Oop, I just pulled that out in the center, but we're going to make it work. And put a pin right in here above. And you notice that I put my pins ab above and below my marking down here. It's a little bit more difficult because my hoop is right here. But we're going to take this out before we stitch it in anyway. And then same thing on the side. Feel for my notch. So my notch is right there. Line it up. And you can also make sure that your shirt is not on the back side. How many times have you embroidered on a shirt and embroidered on the back side or another part of it that shouldn't be embroidered on? So just like that. And this is why it's easier to do it with bigger shirts as well because you can always turn this. Once you imagine I've got my fixed stitch on here. You can turn this and you can see if your fixed stitch is straight and exactly where you want it. So any questions on that? These are just my tips and tricks for what I've learned that work best for me for embroidering, getting things in the center where you want them, um, t-shirts mainly, but I did show you um, regular cotton there. So any questions or anything with that so far? And then now we're going to go to the fun part. The, um, I need a little drink really quick. Um, the embroidery part of it. And there's a couple different ways I'm going to show you for finding the center. Okay, so first we are going to start with, um, if you have a creative icon too, you may have noticed that you had an update recently. And with that update, you have, um, I want to take this off my screen, just one second, I'm ready to it up there. Um, you noticed that there was an update and it did address the hoop scan. Um, things that they were working on fixing. So we're going to go through hoop scan today. Super quick and easy. So if you don't have a creative icon too, and you've been thinking about it, this is one of those great features that could get you up to that next one that it's definitely worth it to have. So let me um, go back over here. I'm going to switch and then I'm going to share. There's my mouse at. I'm going to share my other screen here. I'm going to add this in. So here's my screen. What we're gonna do first is we are going to come down here to hoop options. And you're gonna notice right up here, it says start or start hoop scan. We're gonna to touch that. And I have my 120 by 120 hoop selected. You have it on your embroidery arm and you're gonna hit okay. And, oh, hold on, we're gonna cancel that really quick because you wanna see what it's doing. Let me switch this one here. Let me switch here, okay. So I'm going to hit that start hoop scan again. And you notice that I don't have, um, I've got a thread on my hoop, but it should be all right. But I've taken my, my presser foot, my embroidery presser foot off, and I have also unthreaded my thread. Um, because as it's scanning, you don't want it to have all of that on there. So if you notice over here, if I get rid of that hoop options, there is what is on my hoop right now. And that little thread is there, but that's all right. It's a thread for my fabric. Um, so if you are working with something and you have a last minute embroidery design that you want to add to it and you want to get it exactly where you want it, this is a great option to do that. You can scan it. You're going to hoop everything, scan it, and it's going to be right there for you to take your design and place it where you want it. So let me show you that. So we're going to come over here and I'm going to choose a tiny little flower right here. I already got it selected, number seven. This is under the mini category number seven I'm gonna click and hold and there is right there 
And then I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it right there for a minute because now here's another one of those great features um, that the Creative Icon 2 has. Right up here you have this little projection symbol, this little um, pyramid is what it looks like. We're gonna touch that and we're gonna turn that on. And if you notice this dimmed over here, and I'm gonna move this out of the way, and we're gonna move our hoop down. I want y'all to be able to see this on camera. Keep going, hold on. You can sort of see it a little bit right there. So there's my flower. Do you see my flower right here on my hoop? And I can move it, oh, oh no, not the whole thing. We're gonna move it where we want it, exactly where we want it, look at that. And there's that little flower right there in the middle of this hexagon. How neat is that, y'all? I, like this, this is game changing right here. So easy and quick to get it right where you want it. You can make those um, minor adjustments with the arrows down here. If you want to get it a little bit more center or more to the top left, whatever, just right there. Right there in the center, super quick and easy. And then you would hit go right down here at the bottom, go to stitch out. And we would hit okay. And then we would stitch it out. I'm not going to stitch it out for time's sake today, but you can still see part of it right there just because of where it's moved and where the camera. If you see, let me show you this really quick if y'all can see this. So the camera is actually right under here, right under there. You notice how it disappears, the flower in and out? So that's where the camera's at. Um, but for time's sake today, because I still want to show y'all um, precise positioning. Um, but any questions on that or anything? Can I show you that again? Anything with the hoop scan or the projection. I just think it's such an awesome feature that we have on the Creative Icon too. So if you have anything, just let me know, but I'm gonna keep on going for now. Now what we're going to do, we are going to do precise positioning. So you've gotten to the point where you have it, where you think that you want it, but if you wanna really make sure that you have it exactly where you want it, the precise position is gonna be your best friend. And there's a, um, I guess you would call it a two or a four, it's, two steps. Amy, would you call it a two step or two way or four way? There's four, four points you're doing, but it's really only two on the hoop. Let me know, Amy, if it's, I think it just depends on who you're talking to, but we're going to go through that. So I already have right here, one of these little leaf guys stitched out and I want to add another one. Say I want to just line all of these up and I want to continue. I'm cutting half here. So I'm working here. I want to add another one and another one and so forth. I want to get them lined up exactly where I want them at on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch this back here. Yes. So it's either two step or four step is what Amy said. Um, it's not one or three. You either do two or four. So we're going to get rid of this little flower. Oh, let me back out of the embroidery right here. Remove our hoop. Okay, okay. Let me zoom back out here. You notice how it brought my light back on. The projection's not there anymore. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to get rid of this guy. Delete him. And then we're also going to go back to our default background setting. So to do that, we're going to hit hoop options down here and background. And we're going to change it to just background color or none. Let me go back here background color. There we go. So now our hoop scan that we had is gone, um, but you can easily bring it all back just by hitting the, the scan button there. And we are going to find this little leaf guy, which is under, it's going to be under, keep going, Foff exclusive right here. And then we are going to scroll up some. Do I know this one or was it? Maybe it was signature. Hold on, let me see. Here, I wrote it down. Let me look. Yeah, Fox exclusive. I, I was right. I just wasn't. Oh, I already scrolled past it. Here we go. Come on. Well, where did it go? What number is it? I wrote that down to 167. I'm going the right way. I just hadn't made it all the way down there. There it is, right here. So we have a couple of these options here, different sizes. And if you're not sure which one is, so there's three different of this little leaf guy here. And 
I wasn't sure which one was which. So what we're going to do is if you hit this little icon with the eye and the arrow right here, you can see this one has, it tells you the size and how many stitches. So this would be the larger one. We want to go with the smaller one here. So we're going to click and hold. I'm going to put it in our hoop and we're going to change our hoop to the 260 by 200 hoop. So the creative elite hoop there. And we're just going to leave it in the center of our hoop. We're not going to do anything. We're going to hit go or to stitch out. Click OK. And our arm's going to come over. Hoop this guy. I'm going to put our embroidery foot back on. So let me get that guy really quick. Again, when you're doing the, um, the hoop scan, you want to make sure that the embroidery foot is off and um, you're not you don't have any thread on there because as it takes a picture it's going to catch that thread and you're going to see a little tail of thread all through it okay. and then just finger tight the screw that holds that in place um so now what we're going to do we have right here our that one is back there okay so if we come down here you see precise positioning right here and it's gonna pull up this window here. If you notice, we've got four icons right here. This first one, if you look at it, this was a little trick that somebody told me a um, long time ago when I was learning, was that this first one and this third one, you notice they have flowers, those are the design. So if you think of the flower design, that is that is what you're gonna be looking at. The design is on your screen still. So flower design, the design is on your screen, it's not on your hoop yet. And then this second and this fourth one are going to be your hoops. So whenever you're under, whenever you have those selected, you're going to look, be looking at your hoop, not at your screen. I think that's where people get confused sometimes is they want to look at their screen when they should be looking at their hoop and vice versa. So again, if you see the flower, that means your design and your design is on your screen. The second and the fourth one are your hoops. And so that's when you're going to be looking at your hoop. So just remember those things. If somebody has a fun little um, thing to remember that, like the, um, if you wear it, don't tear it um, analogy, that would be great. So what we're gonna do first, we are going to find our first point. And I want my points to line up right here with this guy. So this first one, I want this point over here. I'm gonna just tap over here and move my little green cursor. And you don't have to put your finger on the cursor to move it. I know that if I put my finger on this cursor, I'm not gonna be able to see where it is. But if I touch anywhere else on my screen that's in the window, I can move it and I, my finger is not in the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to get it as close as we can right there to the point. But I'm not sure that that's exactly where I want it. So this button right here with the little needle, if you zoom into that, it zooms in. So then you can make those adjustments and get that point right on the point. And then you can use your arrows here also to get it exactly where you want it. Y'all, this is the fastest, not fastest, the best way to get designs exactly where you want them, to get them precisely where you want them, is right here. So that's our first point. So again, we have number one selected here. We're working on the screen. Now we're going to go to number two. Now we're working on the hoop, so we're not looking at the screen anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the arrows on my screen, not looking at my screen, I'm going to use the arrows, and I'm going to move my needle so that it lines up right here with this point here. And you can roll your needle down. Always go forward with your hand well. Get it a little bit closer. And get a little bit more. Cause I'm gonna stitch this one out. I want you all to see exactly where this is at. So I have that right there in the point of my leaf right here. So if I come back over here to my screen, I've done one and two. I've done my hoop or my, my design, then my hoop. Now we're gonna do our second let me back up here so you can see everything. Now we're going to hit number three. And again, we're working with the design. So now we're going to take our cursor and move it down here to the point of this guy. And I've got this window in the way here, and I still need those arrows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in to my point right there, moves it up on my screen, and then I'm going to just move my cursor where I want it. And I can't get it exactly where I want it, just moving it with my finger. So using these little arrows gets exactly where you want it, right there. Now that was number three. Again, hoop, uh, or I'm sorry, 
keep saying it and that's not helping y'all. Flower means design, means your screen. So then we're gonna go to number four. And now we're gonna go to our hoop. So I want that next point to be right here on my leaf. So you notice over here on my screen, I don't have four arrows anymore. That first point that we did from one and two is a fixed point. So if you have a fixed, imagine, I'm trying to think, if you have a fixed point, then you can just go around in a circle. So that's what we're doing. We have our fixed point up here. Now we're just moving our needles and I'm going the wrong way. So I want to scoot it back. So it's pivoting on this point right here, that, I, that first one that I did. And we're going to roll our needle down. We're pretty close. We'll go a few more. Right there. That's exactly where I want it. And then we're going to hit over here back on our screen. We're going to hit OK. Just like that. So let me thread this really quick because I want you all to see that I got this exactly where I want it. So you can see my whole thing is still zoomed in there. So you notice my little leaves have turned. They're at the angle, and that angle looks pretty close to the angle that I needed over here on my hoop. So let's thread this guy. And here's one of my favorite, favorite features is this automatic needle threader. So it's not just like the pull down needle threader. You've got it hooked in right here, right there, and we're gonna hit one button and watch that. It threads it. Love it, y'all, love it. If, if the um, hoop scan and the uh, uh, projection didn't do it for you, hopefully the needle threader will do it for you. So we're gonna hit play. We're gonna stitch this out. This is gonna take a few minutes, so. And I want y'all to be able to see it, so I'm, but I'm still here. Just let me know if y'all have questions, anything that I can show you again. I would love to show you, um, but I want y'all to see that I got this exactly where I want it. Just a minute here while we stitch this out. This is your time. If you've got the questions or anything that I can talk you through, just let me know and we can do it. I'm going to get this guy out so y'all can see. Did this all make sense to everybody? Um, I can definitely go through the whole process again. I have another hoop. We can do the first and second points again, and then the hoop points. Just let me know. I'm happy to, to go through it one more time. I know sometimes just doing that repetitiveness helps. Oh, thank you, Amy. So look, if you look right there, my first point is exactly lined up. I'm going to pull this hoop off when this is done for you to see exactly that I have these lined up. Love it. So easy. And I agree, Benny. Having that magnifying lens set is so helpful. I should have, I wasn't even thinking to have that on because I wasn't sewing today. But if you have the magnifying lens set option to hook onto your machine, it definitely helps finding that point so you're not straining your eyes as much. have any questions about um, embroidering on different things that you've had difficulty with in the past let me know I'm happy to see if I can answer those for you um, if you have features about the creative icon 2 that you love even if you don't have the creative icon 2 you can still love the features I would love to know what your favorite features are I haven't even mentioned all of them I've just mentioned a few of them um, but if you have some let us know what your favorites are also All right, here we go. Look at this. You, I don't even have to pull this off and y'all can see this, but I'm gonna pull it off so you can see. So 
let's switch back over here. Look at this, y'all. Our two points. I mean, it was like they were made like that in a design. How awesome is that? So you would do this when you're wanting to get something exactly where you want it. You have those two points. If you are doing, um, trying to think of something else, a name across a shirt or a logo over a pocket as well. So you've got that pocket line and say your pocket's not straight on your hoop. You can always do that precise positioning and get it lined up. This is great for when you're doing endless designs, when you're doing the, um, Amy, what is the name of the big, big hoop? The 350 by 360, the, the big, big hoop when you're, when the turnable hoop, whenever you turn it, getting those points lined back up, this is when you're going to want to use that. Very easy to use. Um, let's see. Okay, I can go through um, precise place or precise positioning again, two and four points. And when I hopefully I answered that when you would use it. If you have questions on that, let me know. And then Sarah Joy said, I'm curious how to embroider on neoprene. What kind of stabilizer? So neoprene, I haven't ever embroidered with it. Amy may have um, suggestions with that too that she can tell me. Um, it's a thicker, actually I sort of have, I think I've embroidered on it once, like a, a console cover um, for somebody. Um, it does have some stretch to it. So you definitely want to have a cutaway stabilizer and it is thicker. So I wouldn't be using a, um, a super lightweight. I wouldn't use a no-shell mesh with a neoprene. Correct me if I'm wrong, Amy. I would use um, like a cutaway um, or even an iron-on with something else. Yep, I'll share the name of the one I just did. Um, grand hoop. Sorry, if you're using the grand hoop, the turnable hoop, um, definitely this is a great time whenever you flip it to get those points lined up again. Um, oh, good. I hope so. I'm glad. I, it's nice to be able to see both the the hoop and the needle area and the screen at the same time. Like that to me makes it a little bit clearer, but we're going to do it one more time here. And then I will share the number of the, the flower design and the, um, the leaf one. So this leaf one here, this one is under the FOF exclusive, and this is on the creative icon too. So it may be different on some of your other machines. If you have it, um, it's going to be FOF exclusive number 167. And then the little mini flower, I already had one stitched out on here, this little mini flower guy. He is under mini and he's number seven. And again, that's just on the free life on two. So let's do it one more time. I'm going to put another one right in here, another one of these guys. So I'm going to switch to this one and then we're going to add in this one second here. Okay. We are going to go back because I have a different size hoop than what I did a minute ago. So I'm going to change my hoop size. I'm going to go to hoop options and choose my 360 by 200 is what I have. And then we're going to go to stitch out. The precise positioning is under the stitch out menu, not under the embroidery edit menu. So if you're looking for it, make sure you're under the right area to find it. We're going to click on our hoop. And then what we're going to do we want these two points right here to line up with these two points back here. I'm not gonna do this one because this one's straight, that's too easy. We wanna do it on an angle. So we're gonna work with these points up here. So precise positioning down here. And again, these are our four um, options here. We're gonna start with number one or this first one here. And the flower means design. So we are only looking at our um, design on our machine right now. So for this one, I'm going to use these top two points up here. So I'm going to move my cursor up to this one here, get it close to where I want it, and we can zoom in right here using the needle. And then we can just make those little fine tune adjustments, even with our finger or with the arrows, just like that. And then we're going to go to number two right here, and it's, it's a hoop. So now we're going to be looking at our hoop. We're looking over here now, and I want that point to be right over here on this point of this leaf. So I've got four arrows over here now. And if you click and hold it, let me back back up so you can see. If you click and hold the arrow, it'll move a little bit faster versus just tapping it um, one, one at a time. And when I get closer to where I want it to be, let me get over here a little bit more. Then I'm going to roll my hand wheel forward and get my needle lined up. So I need to go back some more and over and get my needle right there in that point right there and I can put my needle where I want it to go right there 
So now we're going to come back over here to our screen. We're going to go to point number two. So number three, circle over here. And again, it's a flower. So now we're looking at our screen again. And if you notice right here, I don't think I showed this to you on the first one. This little um, cross axis that's gray. This is our fixed point. So this next one is going to pivot off of that fixed point. So we're going to move our green cursor to this point. We're going to zoom in to get it exactly where we want it. Look at that. We can get right on that stitch where we want it. And now I'm going to go to this fourth circle, and it's a hoop. So we're going to come back over here to our hoop. Back this back up. So now we're going to pivot. It's going to pivot on this little um, gray cursor we have. We're going to hit our arrows, and it's always opposite of what you actually want it to do. I always hit the wrong arrow. We're going to keep going over here. So, um, Sarah asks, would it be beneficial to use the projector as well during precise positioning? Um, yes. Whenever you, so you notice I showed you the um, projector first. So the projector first, I can get it roughly where I want it. With this fabric, there's no design on this fabric. Um, the projector is really helpful when you've got a design on your fabric or um, you have a lot going on around your fabric for it to scan it all. I'm only using white fabric today, so it wouldn't necessarily benefit me in this situation. But in this one, you could definitely, if I was doing one of these leaf things on this guy and I wanted it to line up with one of these points, I could definitely use the projector to put it where I wanted first and then go back in there and fine tune it with that precise positioning. So there are two different things that can help you. It just depends on how fine tuned you want things. Um, the first time I stitched out one of these, I just put it where I wanted it, and then I went in with precise positioning. So hopefully that answers. They're, they're two different things, and they work hand in hand with each other if you have that option. But I'm, And not everybody has the projector option also. Um, not everybody has a creative icon, so I want to make sure I show the um, precise positioning also for those that don't have that option. So hopefully that answers that for you. So we're going to get this point right there. It's exactly where we want it right there. And then we're going to hit OK. And now, if you look, again, my design is, is turned, and it's going to line up right there. I'm going to start stitching it out now. Sorry, I hope, I hope that answered it. I think I, I used my... I use the wrong word for each one of them. I apologize. I think I was saying projection versus scan and whatnot. I, if Sarah, if that didn't answer your question, please let me know. I'm happy to explain it again and be mindful of my words there. Um, I'm going to, y'all have already seen one of these stitch out, so I'm going to switch back over to me really quick, and we're going to get rid of this. It is about time for us to wrap up. So as this one stitches out really quick, it says, let's see. It says it's going to take three minutes, and we still have six, seven minutes left of our life. So we'll let this stitch out, and then Amy, um, if you will share with me the next slides, I will get all that information out, or if there's any other questions I can answer, let me know while this stitches out, and I'll show you this one too really quick. So our next pop live is with yours truly again. Um, we are going to be doing embellishing denim. So um, embellishing denim jackets specifically, um, I saw something last year that I really enjoyed and I think it's very on trend right now um, and it's doing yarn couching and different things with that. Um, I have a couple different things I'm going to do with it, not just that, but I'm really excited about it. We're going to do felting on denim. We're going to do yarn couching for emotion, um, just embellishing and enhancing denim. We're getting into the fall and I know denim is, is a big thing for the fall with denim jackets and pants and things. So hopefully um, you can take some of the tips and tricks I give you and um, just um, bring life to your to your fall wardrobe again. You know, change something up, make it new for the season. So that is going to be, I'm sorry, I didn't even get to the date and time. That next FOP Live is going to be on September 21st at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central with me, and it's embellishing dinner. So 21st of September. And our next My Sew Net Live is going to be next Wednesday, and that's with Mickey Hudson. And she's going to be doing embossing. Um, so, you know, when you have a towel, I know I see lots of questions about this. Um, if you have a towel and you want to have that, like, um, sort of not a knockdown stitch, but a knockdown stitch, she's going to go through embossing so that you 
have um, that layer, um, and then also where you have the outlines of monograms, where you could put something over, things like that. So it would be a great live um, if you're just in general um, to join for my summit. And that's going to be next Wednesday, September 13th at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central. And that's going to be over on the my summit page. So this guy is almost done here. If there are not any more questions, I'll show you this one really quick when this is done. And then I will let you have the rest of your day. Thank y'all so much for, for joining us and spending your afternoon with us. We do appreciate it um, that you take that time out of your day to spend it with us and, and learn and hopefully be inspired um, to want to get out there and create. So this guy's almost done here. If they're also, since we're coming up to um, the new year, we are working on the calendar for 2024 for Facebook Live. So if you have suggestions or topics or things that you would like to see or part two on, I know we've had a lot of like, hey, we want to see part twos of some past lives. So we're going to try and get those added in. But if you have anything, please feel free to type it in the comments and I will make note of those. Um, and we'll get those quickly added to a live in some way. But so here was the first one that I did right here. And then here's the one I just added to it. And look at that. My points are lined up exactly where I want them. I'm trying to right here and right there. Look at that. So easy. So simple. Um, practice it. It's it's easy to do. Just hoop some fabric. Pick a design. Pick, you know, you could do many flowers. You could do something smaller than this. Um, and just practice using it. And, and you'll get the hang of it really quick. You'll be surprised how, how quick you get the hang of it. So. If there's not anything else, I will be answering questions um, following if anybody's watching this later. So feel free to still type in those questions um, as if we were still live and we will get back with you on them. So thank you all so much. Y'all enjoy the rest of your week.